So right off the bat, I'm quite impressed with how everything is set up and how minimalistic it is. So we have the base, the upper gantry, and then we just have a few pieces here. So as you can see, this is quite friendly and should be quite simple to assemble and get going. And I really like it when companies make it as easy as possible for you, the user, to have a painless experience and installation and get set up and going really quick out of the box. So in our manual here, you guys can see how many parts we should be having. Very simple. And then we have these nice pictured step-by-step -step directions of how to put it together. So step one is quite simple. It's aligning the gantry to the base and then affixing it with these four M540 bolts. And that is gonna require the four bolts, these longer ones. And don't forget to put the little washers in the bolts. And so we're gonna simply grab the upper portion and we're gonna set it down. Now, when you do set it down, you're gonna have to be really careful because on this printer, there are connectors right here. It looks like mine are loose, but maybe they're keeping them loose on purpose. So when you go in there, then we can plug it in. That's probably what's going on here. So in any case, when you do put this in, be careful with these connectors here. They do plug right there on the other side on the base. So just keep that in mind when you're putting this in. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set this over slowly. And my connector here looks like is okay where it's at. So it is quite loose, so it doesn't even plug. So I guess we're okay. I think they leave that loose on purpose so you don't ruin that when you do try to install this. So the easiest way I found this is just tilting the printer to the side and then grabbing a bolt and starting it on the bottom. Go ahead and start it too. So then we're gonna grab the provided Allen wrench and tighten them up a bit. So don't tighten this yet. Just kind of get it close until you start the other side. All right, now we go to the other side. I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna tilt it. And you can see on the bottom there's cutouts here for the bolts. And so we can go ahead and tighten this side up really snug. So you definitely wanna make this as snug as you can, but you can kind of feel when the bolt, you know, starting to get a lot of resistance, you just stop. Because you do want this to be quite rigid. And now we're just gonna to go to our other side and tighten these up. And so now our base is connected to the upper portion of the printer here. And believe it or not, guys, that's the only major part that we will need to assemble. So as you can see, this is a very easy and beginner friendly kind of printer. So let's go back to this side where we have this plug that we need to plug in. And what I'm noticing is I have a few loose parts here. I think during shipping, some of these parts came apart like this motor here. So I'm gonna have to figure that out, I guess, in a little bit. Can't really get to it where it is right there. But if you can see right here, this plug, hopefully you can see that's the plug that we never plugged in. We can go ahead and gently push this in until you know it kind of just stops. And there are two little bolts here that we can tighten up and the, this plug will be rigid and not move around like it is right now. All right, I think that's a little better. There's some more lighting. Well, you can see there's two bolts right here that we just need to tighten. And already our plug is nice and tight with just even one bolt. Go ahead and do the other one. That should be good right there. So that's nice and tight. So step two in the manual is actually installing our spool holder and that should be a pretty simple process. Our spool holder here is completely metal and so it'll go something like this on the top here. Now one of them has a little knob here and I'm guessing that's the one that maybe is for adjustability. If you guys can see here on the top maybe there's little grooves and the spool holder simply just goes in those grooves just like that. So one of these can adjust and that's the one that had this little knob that I pulled off of it. And so they make it easy where you can just tighten that and it'll stand still so you can fit different kind of spools, different sizes. And so this one doesn't really have to do anything. It just sits in there like that. So yeah, it's quite simple the way it works. So you know, you just will adjust this one to your spool width and this one is just stationary there. So it does kind of move around, but it doesn't really matter. And there are individual bearings here on each end that the spool rolls on. So it makes it very smooth. Definitely a pretty nice way of making a spool holder. Now we do have this plug here and that actually plugs to the filament detector here which is on the front side. And so you just simply plug the plug into it and that's it, now we have a filament detector. So I ran my wire behind the bracket here and around because I don't want this cable to be rubbing on the uh, spool as it's turning. So it should be just fine right there. All right, so for step three, we just need to connect all the connectors, the two Z motor connectors, and then the Z axis optical connector. And then there's another connector here also. All right, so here on the back of the printer, we can see that there's a motor here and a motor here, and that's what we're plugging in. And then there's a wire coming out from the base right next to it, and that's what we need to plug. So this one's done, and that one's done. So there is another plug right here, 
And this is actually the filament detector cord here that needs to plug into that socket. All right, just like that. Now it did come with this little piece of trim here that kind of tucks the wire away and it clips into the channel right here. So you can see it just clipped in there. So that kind of keeps it where the bed doesn't hit it. So check where that goes. Maybe you raise it up a bit. So make sure the bed is not gonna be rubbing on this wire here. All right, looks good. So for the last part, on the front right side of the printer here, we can see that there's a sensor right here. And this is what tells the Z-axis here to stop when it gets you know, close enough to here. And that plug is just right here. And we're just gonna simply plug that in. All right, quite a simple process. So this thing doesn't really go anywhere, it just sits here, just like that. All right, so we're getting really close to putting this thing together. Actually guys, we are done putting this together because on step four here, it just says to adjust the wheels on all the axes. And that's basically the last step. But before I can get to that, I wanna go ahead and cut this loose here. There's some zip ties holding the Z axes from going up and down. And it looks like my belt here is completely loose. So it looks like during shipping my motor here, the x-axis motor completely unscrewed itself and relieved tension here on the belt. So I need to raise the z-axis up a little bit so we can see what I can do here about this motor. So most likely you're not gonna have this issue. It's just my isolated issue. And there was a little bolt that I found in the box. I guess that fell out, which was part of the uh, motor here that holds it. So yeah, I'm just gonna reinstall that little bolt and it looks like everything's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna push on the motor that way to tighten up the belt. And then there's another bolt on this side. We'll go ahead and tighten also. All right, so we're back to normal here. So all that happened is this little motor here got unscrewed and kind of fell out and made the belt loose. Nothing major here, so it's back to normal. Everything is good. All right, so now we're gonna pull out our fancy little chrome wrench here. And we're also gonna need an Allen wrench. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna check the tension on these wheels here. So there's actually wheels behind these covers also but you know they are sealed up and there's no way we can get to them so hopefully they adjusted those from the factory that's kind of strange that they did that i would rather they leave it open so we can adjust them but uh yeah hopefully they got that right and it's fine there and actually looking at this hot end one it's also perfect we don't even have to adjust this but basically what you want like you want these wheels to barely spin like if any of these wheels are loose and have no friction, that means it's too loose. And if it's really hard to spin, that means they're too tight. So, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve to this, but it's all about being as loose as possible without having any kind of play in the, uh, in the whole apparatus. So. so it looks like we're fine here. Let's check the bed. And surprisingly on mine, even the bed is perfectly fine. So it looks like my machine was adjusted in the factory and it pretty much stayed that way. And so there's no wobble, but the little rollers underneath, you know, spin with just slight friction. So, and that's what you really want. So yeah, at this point guys, pretty much you are finished. If everything looks good, you know, make sure your belts are tight and running true. While all this stuff should be, you know, done right from the factory, a lot of times they will be where you have to adjust things. On mine here, it doesn't appear I have to do practically anything. All right, I think we can go ahead and take off this paper here on top of the bed. And let's go ahead to take the little screen protector from the display. And that's it, we're done with the assembly process.